Change your diet, change your life, change the planet. Is, but it's, it's frigid, my face is stinging. I'm out running and I didn't realize it until a few minutes ago. It's like I woke up and I was running and I was like, whoa, I didn't even, I don't remember starting my watch. I don't remember walking down to the street. I'm just out here doing it. And what I did Instead of setting myself up for failure, instead of looking at all the reasons why I shouldn't go run, it's another gray day. It's really windy outside. In the woods right now, it's not so bad, but out on the road, man, it was windy. And it's cold. So I didn't look at what the weather was doing. I didn't look at the thermometer. I just set myself in motion. I got my socks, got my clothes, got my watch got an audiobook. I'm listening to a lecture on Plato's Dialogues right now. And just like a Rube Goldberg device, I put the marble at the top of the thing and I clicked it and I let gravity take over and it's winding down the ramp, going through a twirly thing, hitting a button which is causing something else to launch and, and all these reactions are taking place. And the point of a Rube Goldberg device is not to have any kind of result except motion. And the point of me running is of not great significance. I'm just simply running. There's no earth-shattering, world-changing event that's going to happen because I'm running today. But I'm in motion. And while I'm in that motion, while that marble is moving down the track, interacting with all these different things, uh, my life is happening. It's like an analogy for life. What happens at the end of the day doesn't matter. Uh, the marble just rolls out of the machine at the end. But the fact that you were in motion and the fact that you had interactions and the fact that there was some kind of movement is what matters. Uh, we often think about the result. We think about, you know, what is the significance of this? We think about that future. And we stop ourselves. Why am I doing this? I stop myself. Why am I doing this? Why am I still running? Haven't I already proven my point? Haven't I won enough championships? And if I think about those bigger questions, I won't do it. If I think about the weather and the wind and the temperature, I won't do it. So I build the machine. I, I construct that Rube Goldberg device, which really serves no purpose other than to get me in motion. And to have that motion be fun. You know, the reason we, we put the marble in that machine is because we like to watch what happens. What's it going to interact with? There's a, an awesome video by a band, OK Go, where the whole video is a Rube Goldberg device from start to finish, where they do all kinds of crazy stuff. And what happens at the end doesn't matter. But they had fun along the way. There were interactions along the way that were interesting and unique and strange. And that's the richness of life. So. Create that structure, whatever that structure is. For me, it's getting dressed and finding an audiobook, having something to drink, and I'm out the door, and it's automatic. The marble's in motion. I don't have to think about it. It's, I'm just getting bounced around inside the machine, and suddenly I'm bounced into the woods. Here I am on a cold day, and I'm having a good time because of all these things that I'm interacting with, the, the mossy rocks, the mossy stump. Look at this mossy stump. I love it. It's like a green octopus growing up out of the ground. And although I'm really bummed about the fact that we lost our snow, I'm excited about the fact that I can see things like mossy stumps and mossy rocks. So I'm gonna take advantage of the dry ground while I can. So create a structure and then just set yourself in motion and you'll be taken out into the world and out into your activities without ever thinking about it. 
The big message today in this lecture is something they call Socratic irony. And this is something I've thought about for the past 20 years, but especially now that I'm on this path. Socratic irony uh, relates to a story where Socrates went around asking people about their professions, about their jobs, because uh, someone said that Socrates was the wisest man in all of Athens, and he couldn't believe this. So he went around asking very wise people, and what he discovered was that they thought they were wise, they professed to be wise, but they really weren't that wise at all. Because they thought they knew everything, but nobody knows everything. And the more people he asked, the more he realized that people convince themselves that they're wise, they convince themselves that they know everything, but in doing so, they actually prove their ignorance. And Socrates, at the end of this story, realized that he was the he was the wisest man in all of Athens because he was the only one that knew that he didn't know anything. And that's the Socratic irony. So on this raw journey, on this athletic journey, I've read everybody's book, I've tried everybody's program, uh, I've tried every diet program, athletic program, training program, I've tried it all. I'm an experimenter. And, well, the wind is cold. And the one thing that I've come away with is that nobody knows everything, but they all tell you that they know everything. Not that I'm the wisest person in the world, but the more questions I ask and the more I learn, the more I realize that I don't know anything. And the more I realize that the search for answers is not the journey. It's the search for questions that matters. Answers aren't important, questions are important. Questions keep you alive on the journey. Questions keep you evolving. Questions keep you growing. Answers shut you down. Answers stop growth. Answers give certainty. And certainty is the enemy of possibility. Check out these pine cones. A squirrel is like totally getting itself set up for the winter.